Hello everyone, today I'll show you a pagination with Spring Boot and vanilla JavaScript. As usual, uh, when I want to generate empty Spring Boot project, I navigate to Spring Starter. In this video I'm going to use Embedded Database, Spring Boot GPA and Lombok plugin. And that's it for today. Let's rename our group and artifact. And we are ready to generate our project. I open this project with my preferred idea for programming. As if you follow my videos, you know that it's IntelliJ idea. Ok, our project is ready and first thing I'm going to create is just a simple model to be able to store it and retrieve from the database. I create package and then let's create for example a user model. And let's add some fields to the user. And also lay, let uh, enable this model to be able to store to the database. Let's add some annotations for the database. I'm not gonna uh, in detail leave on these annotations because I have a lot of videos on my channel according Spring Data GPA. And I add a data annotation from Lombok to generate getters, setters, equals, hash code, and to string method. I select generation strategy and identity because I will uh, auto increase this ID through the database. And you guys can see that I don't set up any databases. It's because I use embedded database and embedded database in the Spring Boot auto configuration enables you to store any table, any content in the embedded database without any configurations additionally. So let's create a repository. It's a simple repository which extends GPA repository. And now uh, I'm gonna use this repository to be able to select part of the users 
from the database not all the information but just uh, the amount of information which I'm going to pass to the repository so let's create some service firstly let's create a repository package for my repository and then create a service which going to retrieve a user service we mark this service as service we add all args constructor and let's add sl4g lombok annotation for enable login on this service and let's create a method which going to return our users users from the database instead of a public list users as we expect to us to do in the common uh, methods we just need to return page uh, page is an object from the spring data domain it contains a lot of possibility to return a pageable a pageable result to to the front end and now i'm going to pass some details for my user fetching it's uh, page, page, page size, sortable, etc. Now I'm going to create a pageable object which will accept my pageable params and my sorting params. So let's create pageable. It has a lot of static methods to, cre to create a pageable. And you can use page request uh, service uh, class which is going to return you a pageable. Page request of is overloaded method. It uh, accepts page and size, and it also accepts a sort object to be able to return a sorted result to you from the repository. So let's add a sort object. Sort object you can create from the sort. It has it also has some static methods to be able to create a sort with your params and as you can see guys sort by is also overloaded it can accept properties it can accept properties with direction so we are going to create a properties and we are also going to create a direction for our properties like ascending descending order for our sorting results in this example i pass only one sorting field but sort by accepts a lot of sorting fields uh, any amount which you need for sorting sorting direction is just an enum uh, with scdc values uh, which means extending and descending order so i just pass uh, s or dest to my 
input method and this value of will generate a direction enum. And then I just auto wire my uh, user repository uh, user repository to be able to use Spring Data GPA. And in find all method, which is embedded, I can pass pageable, and this find all method will return me a page. As you can see, it return iterable, which we usually use to return a list of objects from the repository. But this time, I I'm going to return a page. And that's it. Uh, this is all our pageable configurations for backend. Let's create some method to be able to enrich our database with some dummy information. Let's say, let's add, for example, 1000 elements of our user. And in this way, I just uh, created it, some dummy information for my database uh, to have some examples to test my pagination. And I'm going to use save all method to be able to save the list of users in one request. So let's create some controller. And I'm gonna auto wire my user service. And first method which I'm going to create is populate. Which is going to uh, create users in my database. And next method is kind of more interesting one. It's also a get mapping. It's going to return a page of user. And it's going to accept my sorting and pageable parameters 
and pass uh, these parameters to my service method. It's just a log method to be able to see my incoming params in the logs. That's it guys, now we have our backend set up for the page anvil. Uh, let's try to run it and test. As you can see, our project started successfully. As we prepared a get method, we just can use a browser to be able to, to make a requests and see the responses. Firstly, let's populate our data. And we can awk message. That means that our users are created in the database. And let's try to fetch some. And we are going to pass the params like a request methods. Let's say I want to see a 10 users on my page and I want to see a first page. And I also want to uh, say that sorting field is ID. And my sorting direction is extending order. And as you can see, guys, I see my users, but from the 11 ID to the 20th. That's why. Uh, that's because, uh, like everything in programming, our page starts from zero. And let's say I want to sort in descending order and I see that I have ID from the top one to the lowest one. So that's everything is good but uh, I promise you that today I'll show you a JS example with frontend and vanilla JavaScript. So let me create a page 
You guys always ask me in the comment that I use some tool in IntelliJ IDEA which you don't have. So today I decided to create a page in the static resources. So you'll be able to open this page just by default address for your server without any additional tools from your IDEA or something like that. So let's create an index.html page in the static folder. If you guys are good, um, you know Spring Boot, that you know that if you put an index.html file under static resources, it will open you by default on your uh, absolute URL path, path for your server. And as usual, I need some pretty table. If you follow my videos, you know where I get this table. This one is good example for me. Firstly, I copy paste styles and then the table itself. And looks good. Let's restart, restart our application and see if our page opens as I promised you. And as you can see, guys, our page loaded successfully. So let's add some logic to be able to retrieve our users and display them in the page with pagination. So navigate to other to our index.html and let's say we want to have ID of the user. It's login, age and email. And let's say, let's leave only this example as we don't need other ones. And let's add one column and remove these placeholders. And firstly, we need to add an ID to our table. And let's create some scripts. And first method we're going to build is get users. For now, we're just going to make some example request to the server to be able to retrieve the users and display them in table without any pagination. So we need to make a GET request to the server. I'll use just jQuery get because it's very convenient for me. So I need to add some scripts.
and let's add some button which is going to trigger our get users and let's restart our application to be able to see the changes As you can see, we have our button and we can make a request to the server and yeah, we receive a 400 error. That's because we haven't passed any params like page, size, sorting fields, etc. Let's do it. Let's actually copy paste the example from our browser. Instead of hard coding these fields, we are going to receive them uh, in this incoming method. And now we can get these fields from some params, but uh, we make sh we need to make sure that in case uh, we don't have these params passed by user, we need some default um, values for these fields. So let's create these fields default values. And uh, that's how we can set up a default values for our fields. So our page is going to be zero, uh, zero sorting field like ID and sorting direction like descending order. And yeah, we can just need to make um, page size also as param. Yeah, and if we, for example, haven't received a page, so if page equals null, then page equals page. Let's call it page number.
and that's it guys uh, everything looks good so let's try to rerun our application okay let's test it for now as you can see we received an our response it's a content which is empty because we haven't populated our db remember we use embedded database so every time we restart our application our database clears so we need to populate the data each time we start our application and you know guys that embedded database is like for demo purposes don't use them for real systems or some something like that stuff use common databases like uh, relational databases, for example, MySQL, PostgreSQL, or use something like NoSQL databases, but use embedded databases just for demo purposes. I call get users once again and receive my response. So now it's time to display my response which is in content in my table I just loop through the content list and I'm going to append HTML to my uh, HTML var. So let's append then this HTML to my main HTML after the loop case. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, let's append this uh, whole HTML to my table with uh, user stable ID. And that's it. And now we can see empty table because we haven't populated users. Let's try once again. Yeah, and we see our users, uh, but without pagination, uh, without sorting and without other buttons. So let's add some buttons so our clients which use our frontend will be able to drive the pagination properties itself.
I'm just gonna create some div to be able to display current page and last page and next page, etc. So now I'm going to create some method, some function to be able to display pageable. Uh, this function is going to accept pageable details, like pageable total elements and total pages. Because if you look through our response, we have a content with our data. We have a lot of parameters from pageable, like pageable itself, which um, which source of set, its current page, page number, page size, and our response also so, uh, stores total elements, total pages. So we are going to display our buttons and our navigational tools uh, depending on those params which comes which come from the server. So let's say HTML equals button. Sorry. Which going to display previous. And next button is going to be next. And we are going to have some, some span which indicates us where we are currently now, on which page and which page is next or uh, which page is previous. So it's going to be just span. And now in our pageable we have an offset. So let's get this offset and display in span. Let's say total elements, not element. And our previous button is going to make a request to the previous page. And next button is going to make a request to the next page. So firstly, we are going to to find out which page is previous and which page is next. And previous page is equals pageable get page number minus one because you know guys we have a page number which displays our current page so the previous page is going to be current page min minus one and let's say uh, if previous page is less than zero it means that we are on the first page. So the previous page is going to be zero. 
The same approach is with next page. And that's it. That's how we find out. Uh, that's how we found out uh, the previous and the next page. Uh, we need to pass this previous and next page to the get users. So let's uh, add on click to this button. just a trick to add count to the inline function So next thing is sorting field. We now we pass just default sorting field. And that's it. Now we passed our previous page, default sorting field, default sorting direction. For now, we just passed default sorting field and default sorting direction, but uh, I'll change that to be able to get real sorting fields. It's our previous, and we are going to do the same trick with the next button. So we can just copy paste this stuff. And just instead of previous page, we're gonna um, pass next page. And in our get users, we need to display correct, correct uh, pageable. Let's make sure we pass correct fields. So we have our data and pageable, data total elements and data total pages. Uh, looks looks not so bad. Just forgot to in, in, embed our pageable HTML to pageable div. Sometimes these things happen, so just correct the mistake. Okay, uh, one attempt. And yeah, we have our buttons and we have our uh, total elements. And if we click 
to the our previous and our next we see that we have different results and yeah we need just to uh, make this field work as well let's try to grab the value from this input and display total pages so let's just add an id page size id and then just grab it in the get users and then instead of default page size we set a current page size so where is our page size let me check yeah we don't need it anymore Yeah, looks like we have page size undefined, which is bad, but not critical. Let's navigate to our project. Page size document get element by ID pageable. Yeah, why pageable div if we have page size ID. Sorry, guys. A lot of mistakes from my side. And yeah, let's uh, let's set for example five results. And yeah, we get users and we click next and we have only five results. Let's say we want a 15 and we have all our example work fine like we expect so the next thing we going to I, i'm going to demonstrate you is just uh, sorting on this page so let's navigate to our page and create some new method let's call it sort and yeah, in this example, just to simplify this, I'm going to sort only by one field. And let's say, if sorting direction, let's create sorting direction field. And yeah, we actually can just use we could actually use this and default sorting field and this sort sorting direction, but I don't want to use uh, these names because you know. It's not a default anymore, it's going to change, uh, then user clicks. So, if sorting direction, is so we actually have two sorting directions, yeah, ascending and descending order. So, if uh, order is ascending, we need to put descending order and vice versa you know guys there are a lot of frameworks on vanilla javascript or other tools which uh, 
enables these sorting functions with sorting uh, this sorting uh, logic from scratch out of the box but I don't want to complicate this tutorial with uh, these tools and I want to make everything work from scratch without, uh, without any other frameworks or tools etc. So and we are going to call get users current page field and sort in direction. So current page we need to create it. And we can find the current page. Let me check current page number. Yeah, it looks like this number contains current page. Yeah, let's click for example on the first page and we have current page number zero. On the next we have current page number one. Yeah, it's a current page. So after we display our after we display our users we just set current page as data number and that's it now we have our current page we have our field uh, and the one thing we need just to call this sort on some click usually you see sorting elements if someone clicks on the header of column and it sees sorting. So let's enable this way as well. So let's navigate where we display our header to the table. Here we are. And let's add on click sort. It's kind of tricky moment just to enable all those uh, all those uh, signs to be able to pass the correct param to the function. That's why a lot of users, a lot of programmers prefer um, frameworks instead of vanilla JavaScript. And yeah, there uh, for now there are a lot of tools to be able to call function instead of this way but I prefer uh, old-fashioned way you know just for simplicity of an example oops sorry guys And let's populate data once again. Restart our pageable page. And OK. Now we can sort our fields uh, in any way we want. So guys, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned. Goodbye, guys.